So there are two functions here. The first one that we're going to look at is the check purchasable function. Now this check purchasable function, what it allows us to do is <clears throat> it's a safeguard to stop people from hitting the purchase button when they don't have enough coins to be able to do it. It's just a, a nice cleaner looking thing that gives you a bit of a pop-up to say, hey, you're able to purchase something, but also the times when you can't purchase anything. So what I'm doing here is I've got a for loop that loops through the items in my shop. And then I'm saying if the coins that I have are greater than or equal to the cost of that item in my shop, then I'm gonna be setting that button to interactable. Now there's a piece here that we don't have enabled yet, which is the my purchase buttons. That's also the last variable that we're going to be adding in. And it is a button list of my purchase buttons. So very quickly, I will add this in. And the way that we do this is by expanding each of these. This is probably the longest part, unfortunately. And there is a way we could do this without having to do this, but it's, again, it's assigning it through code. And I'm trying to give you something that's as scalable as possible. And you can cut it back if you want to and supplement code in elsewhere. So I've got all my buttons selected, scrolling down to my purchase buttons, and I'm gonna be dragging those buttons into this list. So when I expand this, I've got 10 templates, 10 templates, 10 buttons. Okay, so let's jump back into our code now and see what this is doing. The only other part of that that wasn't true is if I don't have enough money, I'm basically just setting this to false. And then inside of here, there's a few places where we're going to want to check whether we can purchase. The first one is when we start the game. Oops. The first one is when we start the game. We want to see immediately if we have enough money. Maybe you've got a load function in here, but if you don't, then we just want to disable the shop so that people can't purchase things yet. We also want to do it when we add a coin because when we add coins, we are basically increasing our currency. And each time we increase our currency, we want to see if we're then able to purchase something. So we'll jump back into our game. Just going to minimize this so it looks a bit neater. So now when I hit play, I can see that I've got my coins. My coin counter works, that's great. I've got my five items in my shop. I can see that these buttons are not interactable, but this one is, and that is because this one costs a singular coin and I've currently got eight. So when I click purchase, nothing happens because I haven't yet got a purchase function. But I can also see that once I get above 10, the next button will become purchasable. And once I get above 15, the next button becomes purchasable. So I can see that this checking whether I, I can purchase something is working. Now we just wanna make it so that the person can actually purchase an item. And that is the final function of our script. That is the purchase item function. <clears throat> Now, inside a purchase item, I'm gonna be attaching this to each of the purchase buttons, and I need a reference to where this, which button I've clicked. So I've added a int button number to this so that I'm gonna be passing that in uh, on my onClick function. And what I'm doing is an if statement to say, if I've got enough money for the cost of this item, then I'm going to reduce the coins by the cost of that item. Then I'm gonna update my UI and then I'm gonna check whether anything else is purchasable or no longer purchasable. And then I would have a thing to unlock an item here, but we're not getting that in depth with this. So we won't worry about that for now. We'll, we'll sort of maybe tackle that in a different tutorial. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the function to the on click for each of our buttons. So I'm gonna be grabbing the shop element and I'm gonna to go to shop manager and I'm going to add purchase item. And now for each of these, I need to just add in the element in the array that they are in. So it's just counting up one per button. And so. Okay, so now that we've got that done and all of our button numbers are assigned, what we're going to do is hit play and see how it runs. So I can see I've got my coins up the top right. I've got my generate coins that are generating coins. It unlocks the button when the number gets above the requirement. And when I click purchase, it reduces my coins. It rechecks whether I have enough currency to be able to purchase it. In this case, I can't purchase the 10 again because I've only got one coin, but I can still purchase the one. So when I click that, I go back to zero. And as I click back up, I can purchase this again. <clears throat> so this is very useful. And yeah. 
Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it's helped you in how to structure a shop as well as use scriptable objects as a data source. If you have any questions or you got stuck somewhere along the way, or maybe you've implemented this into a game and you'd like to show it off, let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you found this method of delivering the code effective, please let me know. It's something I'm experimenting with. When I record these, sometimes they can go quite long when I'm typing at the code. So I really wanna try keep it short and deliver the actual content that's needed. But if this isn't very effective, please do let me know. Other than that, I hope you do subscribe, leave a like, comments, all that jazz. Thank you very much and I will see you next week. So let's see how this works. If I hit play, my zero coins, my five items, and I can see that my purchase button is enabled. Why is that? <clears throat> no, seriously, why is that? <clears throat>